when you are purchasing the raw material then you have to see that it has been stored well until it is used in the factory now what do we mean by creating a market offering so it is nothing but you are making a market offer in terms of the size of the product the quality of the product and also what are the features you will be offering in the product before you produce a new product you have to first analyze the pulse of the customers Hello everyone I'm Purnima faculty in the department of commerce with the Ashram Priya University College Temple of Excellence now in this session on marketing that is chapter 11 of the business studies in this session 1 let us look into what are the contents of this lesson now first one is we will be discussing about the meaning of marketing so we all know what is the meaning of the word market most of us would have visited the market at any point of time so we all know what is a market but we don't know what is marketing so let us understand what is the meaning of the word marketing then next we will have a distinction between marketing and selling so most of us confuse marketing for the word shopping so what is the main difference between marketing so marketing as a technical term and marketing in ordinary usage and marketing and selling so we will be discussing all these terms here and then next we will be having a brief discussion on the functions of marketing so what are the various functions so if you can know that we can understand by the word marketing is marketing refers to just buying and selling of goods and services that is all we understand or the common man feels that marketing is nothing but there is an exchange of goods and services for cash but then we have to understand that in addition to all this there are a lot of activities which are connected so all those activities right from the production up to the product reaches the hands of the consumer there is a whole range of activities which will be there and it will be covered in marketing so we need to understand the customers pulse we need to understand their needs and wants we also need to understand the customers preferences and give them an offer so when you give them value products they should be able to part with their money and buy the products so all these things we will be discussing in the functions of marketing next we will look at the role of marketing in the development of an economy in a firm to the society and to the consumers now how this marketing will help in the development of the economy so in an economy how it is developed then in a firm and in the society and as well as the consumers so how marketing will help that we will be having a discussion and then the elements of marketing mix so what are the various elements of marketing mix we all know that there are four p's of marketing that is product price place and promotion so they combine the marketing mix so we will have a discussion on what is the marketing mix then next we will also have a discussion on classification of products into different categories so how the goods are classified so whether they are consumer durables whether they are fast moving consumer goods or industrial goods or raw materials so all this we will be studying each of the goods based on the classification then next we will also be studying about the factors affecting the price of the product so we should know that a products are is a bundle of utility so whenever we want to make use of the product we have to part with a certain amount of price so this one how the what are the various factors that go into fixing the price of a product and how the prices are fixed so all this we will be having a discussion and then the different types of channels of distribution so what are the various channels through which the products are distributed all over the country and all over the world and then we will also have a discussion on the major tools of promotion that is advertising personal selling sales promotion and publicity now we all know what is advertising so advertisement is a non personal paid form of sales publicity or it is one kind of publicity where you 
make the consumer aware of the uh, certain product which is available in the market. So this advertisement, it may be through the TV, through, through the internet, through magazines, newspapers and various other mass media. So depending on that, we have the various types of advertisement. Then we have the personal selling, sales promotion and publicity. So all these topics will be discussed in this chapter on marketing. Now first let us look into what is the meaning of the word marketing. Now before we understand what is marketing we have to know what makes a product sell. So what makes a product sell actually it is the need or the utility of the product. So in other words, the, the whatever the utilities the product offers that will be attracting the persons or the people to buy the product. So product is a bundle of utilities or it has a need satisfying power. So we should understand that a product sells because of the demand it has among the consumers. Then we should also understand that product does not sell by demand alone. There are various other factors also which influence the demand for a product. For example, the government then we also have the religious leaders and we also have the various other promotional activities which influence the consumer mind to see that he buys the product. So there are so many things which go into creating a demand for the product and as a result of which the product will sell. Now let us look into the meaning of the word marketing. Now in the marketing has been referred to as performance of business activities that direct the flow of goods and services from producers to consumers. Now, we should understand what is the meaning of the word marketing. So, marketing is the all those business activities. So, what are the business activities? So, it may be buying and selling. So, you buy the raw material and then you convert it into a finished product and sell the raw material. Now, when you are purchasing the raw material, then you have to see that it has been stored well until it is used in the factory. So, there are so many activities. So, right from the place where you buy the raw materials till the time when it is being converted into a finished good and then it reaches the go down till then there are lot of activities and these activities whatever are the business activities that involve in seeing that the goods reach from the producer to the consumer they all come under the umbrella of marketing. So marketing is anything that is related to the production of a product till the it reaches the hands of the consumer any activity you do all those activities can be termed as marketing. Now, before we start production of a product, the producer or the manufacturer has to understand the pulse of the consumer. What is the needs of the consumer? What are his preferences? So we all know that consumers' needs and preferences keeps on changing from time to time. And we should understand that as and when the fashion and styles changes, the consumer's preference also keeps on changing. So based on the changing preferences and the changing time, we need to upgrade our products. So we need to collect feedback from the consumers relating uh, to our products and see that the products are up to the customer's specifications or their expectations. So right from collecting feedback up to the point it goes to into the manufacturing unit. So all those activities also. So whatever you do, whether it is the marketing research you conduct or whether you collect the feedback and do statistical analysis and then see what is the actual need of the customer. So all those activities can be broadly referred to as marketing. So marketing in other words, it encompasses all the business activities. So whatever a businessman does, it can be termed as a marketing activity. Now let us look into the different meanings of marketing here. To move the goods and services from the producer to the consumers, a number of activities such as product designing, merchandising, packaging, warehousing, transportation, branding, selling, 
advertising and pricing are required. So, all these activities are referred to as marketing activities. Now, here we have a list of various marketing activities here. Now, first one is product designing. So, how do you design the product? Now, suppose you want to have a new soap in the market. Now, you want to bring about a new soap in the market. Now, what will be the design of that soap? Whether it will be the routine soap, whatever you are having or you want to offer something extra. So, depending on your uh, feedback, you will be just designing the product. So, product designing is an important marketing activity. Then, merchandising. So, what is this merchandising? So, after you have the product design, then you go into manufacturing and then after that, we will be having the packaging of the product. Now, packaging plays an important role in attracting the consumer towards the product. So, if you, the pack package is very good, the customer will be easily attracted to buy the product. So, when you see an array of products uh, which are arranged in uh, on the shelf of the shop, so the package should be eye-catching enough to catch the customer's eye and he purchases the product. Then next is the warehousing. Now in this warehousing we have to understand that whatever products we are offering to the customer they have to be stored and then sold. Until there is demand for the product we have to see that the products are well protected. Now whatever is the go down so wherever you are placing your finished goods so it is called as the warehouse and from the warehouse the goods will be transported. Now here in this transportation we see that the products reach the customers on time. So wherever the customers demand is we have to see that there is proper transportation facilities to transport the goods from the go down to the customer. Then next is branding. Now, what do we mean by branding of a product? Branding of a product, in other words, means so you are creating a brand name for the product. So, whenever you create a brand name, for example, it is Rin Soap, Vim Bar, all these brand names. So, they are there. So, they give a sort of identification to the product and the consumer can just differentiate one product from another. So, brand name gives a particular identity to the product. Then selling. Now huh? here selling means you will be actually selling the finished products. So whatever you have manufactured you will be selling the product and then advertising. Now if you just manufacture the product and offer it for sale nobody will purchase the product until and unless you advertise the product. So, advertising is an important marketing tool. So, with the help of advertisement, you create a demand for the product so that the product sells very well. Then, last one is pricing. Now, this pricing plays a very important factor in creating the demand for a product. Now, what do we mean by pricing? So, here, the pricing refers to how we price the products. So, whether the goods which we have manufactured are for the low income group, the middle income group or the high income group, the price plays an important factor. So, if it is the, if the product is meant for consumption of the high income group, they don't bother about prices. So, they will purchase the product whatever is the price of the product. But then the middle income group, they are very, very choosy and if the price is slightly high, they will outrightly reject the product and the same way with the low income group. They don't bother about brands etc. They just want to have the utility of the product as such and they go in for the price of the product. So, all these things which we have listed here, they all refer to the marketing activities. Now, next we will just see what is merchandising and selling. The merchandising and selling 
distribution are parts of a large number of activities undertaken by a firm which are collectively called as marketing. Now, under marketing, we come across merchandising, selling and distribution. So, they all come under the uh, heading that is marketing. Now, let us understand what are the other activities involved in marketing. Now, activities such as identification of customer needs, collection of information for developing product, designing suitable product package and giving it a brand name a perform before commencement of the actual production. Similarly, many follow-up activities are required for maintaining good customer relations for procuring repeat sales. Now, in marketing, we have a list of various activities. In addition to this, we have some of the activities which are like identification of customers needs. We must understand that marketing is not a post production activity but before the actual production activity takes place there are certain activities which are to be performed. In this the first one is identification of customers needs. Now in this identification of customers needs we should understand that customers needs and wants are numerous and it has to be fulfilled. Now marketing has to see that the, what are the various needs which are to be which can be fulfilled by the business community. Then next one is collection of information for developing the product. Now whenever we have to market the product or we have to go in for production of the product we have to have necessary information to be collected for developing the product. Now how do we develop a new product? What are the various customers needs? What, what are the various expectations of the customers? So all these things we have to take into consideration before we develop a new product or a service. Then designing suitable product package. Now after you develop the product you have to see that the product has an attractive package. Then giving it a brand name. So along with the package we give a brand name and they are performed before commencement of actual production. So all these activities are there before the commencement of actual production. Now even after production has started and the finished products are there, we have to do one activity called test marketing. Now what is this test marketing? So in this test marketing, we will be seeing, we will be just testing the product among the few customers. Like right? So we have a sample market where we just offer the uh, product to the customer and we collect the feedback of their reaction. So we just ask them about the product and then based on their reactions we can just modify the product. So these all these activities are necessary to see that there is a proper uh, good customer relationship for procuring repeat sales. So whenever the product is a hit, the consumer wants to come back for a repeat purchase. So in order to see that there is repeat purchases, we have to ensure that the customer feedback is done and whatever the expectations of the customer, it has been properly taken care of. Then let us look into the meaning of the word marketing as per Philip Kotler. So Philip Kotler has defined marketing as a social process by which individual groups obtain what they need and want through creating offerings and freely exchanging products and services of value with others. Now here the marketing uh, specialist whom you call Philip Kotler, his definition of marketing, what does his definition say? In this, he says that marketing is a social process. So, it is a social process whereby individual groups, so there are certain groups of people who want some products, who obtain what they need and want. So, we should understand what is the meaning of the word need and want. So, we should understand what is need and what is want through creating offerings. So, this uh, social process 
it will create offerings and freely exchanging products and services of value. So, the, uh, they are giving the products and services of value with others. So, we should understand that so the marketing is a social process through which the customer's needs and wants are fulfilled and they are ready to part with their money to buy the product. So, here there is an exchange of money for goods. Now, all this goes as a social process and hence Philip Kotler has defined marketing as a social process. Now, let us look into what are the important features of marketing. So, in the important features of marketing, we should understand that needs and wants. So, we will understand what is the meaning of need and want. Now, we all have understood that marketing satisfies the needs and wants of the customer. Now, we should have a differentiation between what is need and what is want. So, a need is a feeling of deprivation or it is a feeling of deprived of something. So, if you don't satisfy that need, you will not be comfortable. For example, if the person is thirsty, he will go in search of water or he will go in search of liquids through which he can quench his thirst. So, that need for getting water to drink, so that we call it as the need. But then, we have to understand what is the meaning of the word want. Want is human need which has been influenced by the culture of the person and the religion of the person and various other social factors. Now, the need which gets created into a want that also has to be satisfied. So, let us understand the meaning of the word need and want. A need is a state of feeling deprived of something. Suppose you are feeling thirsty, then you uh, search for water or you want to quench your thirst by drinking some liquid. So, it may be water or it may be juice or whatever is available around the person's uh, environment in the environment. So, he will just drink it and quench his thirst. So, this is the basic need which is there in every human being. So, human being will have hunger and he will feel the need to sleep. He will feel the need for thirsty that is he wants to drink water. So, there are so many other biological needs of the human beings. Now, but if you just think of want, want is the human need which is being influenced by the personality of the person, then the religion followed and the culture followed by the person. So, they all get converted into a want of any consumer. Now, the main aim of marketing is to see that it satisfies the needs and wants of the consumer. So, based, so we, they have to feel the pulse of the consumer and see that his needs and wants are properly taken care of. The next function of marketing is creating a market offering. Now, what do we mean by creating a market offering? So, it is nothing but you are making a market offer in terms of the size of the product, the quality of the product and also what are the features you will be offering in the product. So, in this way, we will be making a market offering. Now, this market offering has to be made based on the customer's taste and preferences. So, when you are developing a new product, we will be looking into what is the feedback collected from the customer, what is his actual need and how this product will be fulfilling the needs of the customer. So, in this way, we are creating a value for that product. We should understand that market offering refers to the complete offer of a product with relation to size, quality and features of the product. Suppose you want to introduce a new cell phone into the market, then what are the existing features of, of the cell phone and what are the enhanced features? So, all this will have to be known to the, made known to the customer so that he will go in for the purchase of the new cell phone. So, what is the product offering to the customer by ways of advanced features? How utility, how 
the customer can make use of the new product so all this will be thought of in this market offering then next third one is customer value here we should understand that the marketers it is the marketer's job, job to see that he creates value for the product now what do you mean by creating a value for the product now the marketer has to see that the product features whatever it is offering to the customer and what are the uses to the customers all these will be properly advertised to the customers so that they are under the they get the impression that they are getting a best price for their money or they will be getting the best value for their money so in other words they should induce the customer to buy the product in this way so that they get the maximum benefit out of it so when they purchase their product the customer should be made to realize that he is getting maximum benefit out of that deal and in this way we are creating a value for the product so customer value refers to the how you are creating a value for the product and make the customer part with his money the next fourth function of marketing is exchange mechanism now in this exchange mechanism we have to understand that the marketing results in exchange mechanism what is this exchange mechanism so whenever there is a demand for the product the consumer will be ready to part with his money and in exchange he wants the product or service now in this exchange mechanism we should understand that there are groups of customers who are ready to part with your money and there are groups of people who want to sell the goods now this process of exchange of goods and services for money that will be the fourth function of marketing now in this exchange mechanism we have to understand that whenever products and services are offered it will be always in uh, for in return for something else or it may be in return for some other product if it is a barter system but usually whenever we are having marketing it will be always through sale that is we are offering the products in exchange for money now in this exchange mechanism we have five concepts in this first one is in the exchange mechanism we have at least two parties that is the buyer and the seller the second one is both the parties will be ready to part with the something which they hold of value that is the seller will be ready to part with the goods and the buyer will be ready to part with this money then in this third concept of exchange mechanism we should understand that they should be proper lines of communication open between the buyer and the seller because if they are not able to communicate with each other then the transactions cannot be affected then next one is they both should be a, they should have freedom of acceptance or rejection of the offer if the buyer feels that the seller is quoting a very high price then he can always reject the offer or if the seller feels that the buyer is bargaining too much or he is being the value being offered for his good is very low then he also can reject this offer now in the last stage we should understand that both the buyer and seller will be willing to enter into a transaction with each other now all these things are involved in the functions of marketing now we should also understand that marketing activities are not restricted to only business organizations or business uh, entities it also extend to all other types of entities like non profit organizations or ngos etc so uh, wherever there is an organization which is offering services like educational services or hospitality services or the hotel industry or the banking industry so they all are, have to market whatever they have to uh, give to the customers so whatever services are being offered to the customers they have to be marketed in the proper manner 
to see that the customers avail of their services. So whether it is the tourism department or the insurance services, banking services or the transportation services, they all have to be marketed properly. Otherwise, there will be no customers for their services. Next, let us understand the meaning of the word marketing management. Now, marketing management refers to planning, organizing, directing and control of activities which facilitate exchange of goods and services between producers and consumers or users of products and services. Now, we all know what is marketing, but then when we combine both the words marketing management, it refers to planning, organizing, directing and control of activities which facilitate exchange of goods and services between producers and consumers or users of products and services. So, all those activities which are involved in marketing, so we have to have a proper plan. So, without a plan, we cannot market our goods. So, whatever are the functions of management, they will have to be incorporated in the marketing activity so that we get the best out of this marketing activity. Then the process of planning and executing the conception, pricing, promotion and distribution of ideas, goods and services to create exchanges that satisfy individual and organizational goals. Now this marketing management involves the planning and execution and conception of the new product. So whenever there is a new product being developed, so that new product, how, we, how do we develop the new product? That will be based on the customer's needs and preferences. Then how do we price the product and how do we promote the product and how do we distribute the product, goods and services to create exchanges. So we see that this product which we are manufacturing or new product which we are developing, they should satisfy the needs of the customers. So this is the main aim of the or this is the process of marketing management. Now, let us look into what are the various steps involved in marketing management. So let us understand the process of marketing management. So in the process of marketing management, the first process or the first step is choosing a target market. Now, depending on the type of business activity the organization is involved in, so we have to uh, choose the target market. Now, how do we choose the target market? So it depends on the product which is being produced. Now, choosing the target market depends on the type of the a product which is being manufactured by the business organization. Suppose if it is a product which manufactures two wheelers, then the target market will be the office goers or the target market will be the college going students, etc. So in this way, we have to see that the target market is, uh, we have to choose who is our target market and see that we just collect the feedback from such market. Then second one is the focus of the process of management is on getting, keeping as well as growing the customers. Now, after deciding the target market, we have to see that we get the customers keep them and also see that there is a growing demand for the product. Now, this is done through the process of marketing management and then the mechanism for achieving the objective is through creating, developing and communicating superior values for the customers. Now, if you just decide on the target market, that will not be sufficient. We have to see that we keep on getting more and more customers as well as we have to see that there is product improvement always. And we should also see that the customers are getting value for their money and there is advanced features of the product so that you keep the customers coming back and purchasing to purchase the product as well as the customers just have to spread the word of mouth that this product is very good in order to influence prospective customers also to come forward and buy the product. So in this way we can see that the product remains in demand for a very long time and they keep uh, coming back for
for repeat purchases now marketing does not only ensure that there is new product development but it also says that we have to keep our customers fully satisfied and we should see that there is constant demand for the product so in addition to constant demand we have to see that there are more and more customers who will be coming into this uh, product or who will be purchasing this product now one important aspect while creating demand is we have to see that the there will be always a continuous demand for the product that is on one one thing and second one is when whenever you are having a continuous demand for the product we have also to ensure that the company has proper production facilities to produce such products so we have to see that there is a continuous supply of goods also in the market to keep up with the continuous demand for the product so in this way we can see that the company will be successful but then a proper care should also be taken to see that the demand does not rise very highly suppose there is a increased demand for the product and if the product does not reach on time or if the, there is a breakage in supply of the product then it may create an adverse impact on the product itself so the marketing managers have to care uh, have to take proper care of this demand management so they have to see that the demand does not go out of hand or there is a proper control on the demand now how do we properly control the demand by slowly reducing the promotion activities and see that the demand gets uh, stands at a particular level so that the supply of goods can be met easily now these are the various steps in the process of marketing management now let us discuss the various marketing management philosophies now if you can look into this production concept this concept was there during the industrialization in the early period of industrialization era we can come across this production concept now in this production concept we can understand that mainly there was production in the factory and there was quantity of goods being produced was there but then there was lot of demand for the goods which was being produced and the main focus was on production in this production concept we should understand that there was a constant demand for the product which could not be met by the manufacturing sector so whatever goods were produced they had they, there was always a market for it and the customers were just buying the goods and services so the quantity of the product was the main focus and availability and affordability was there people used to buy almost all the products whatever whatever was being offered in the market and the profit was there through the volume of production so whatever the manufacturer was able to produce so he could just sell it to the, in the market without any promotional activity now in the second concept of marketing we have the product concept now the in this product concept the product becomes the main focus of attraction now whatever what is the manufacturer offering to the customer by way of the product so here the quality performance and features of the product become very very important now this product concept relates to some of the consumer durables which are a one time purchase so once the customer purchases it then he will not go in for any changes so before he makes that purchase so he will be looking into the quality performance features of the product etc and then we can always have this pro this product concept is based on product improvements and the profit for the uh, manufacturer will be through the quality he is offering so if he is offering a very high standard quality product then he will be making maximum 
profits now the third concept of marketing or management is the selling concept now what do we mean by selling concept here the selling concept says that whatever is existing in the factory it has to be sold now if the goods are just produced in the um, uh, factory and kept in the go down it is of no use at all so unless and until you sell the products you cannot get back your money so whatever money has been invested by way of capital it has to be sold and then we can realize the money which we have invested so whatever we are being uh, whatever we produce we have to sell it and this selling is done through selling and promotion so we have to see that proper advertisement and proper promotional activities are taken up to see that the products get sold in the market and the profit gets comes through the sales volume here so now in the selling concept we should understand that whenever you have more sales then more profits come into the organization then the next concept is the marketing concept so this is the most modern concept we can call why because here the focus is on the market now what kind of a market it is so who are the customers of this market what are their needs what are the wants so here the customer becomes the center of focus here so in this the customers needs are to be taken care of so what are his needs what are his preferences what are his expectations about the product so all this will have to be taken care of in this marketing concept and as such this concept starts even before the production activity starts so before you produce a new product you have to first analyze the pulse of the customers so what does he need what is his preference so what is his style what is his what is the fashion which is changing so all these things will have to be taken into consideration before we decide or we before we go into manufacturing or production of the product then next is you will have to have integrated marketing now what is this integrated marketing so in this integrated marketing first thing is you will have to decide for whom you are producing the product what is the price range for which the product can be offered and who are your target customers so in this way you have this integrated marketing or you see that there is a proper marketing plan through which you can always sell to your customers now profit through customer satisfaction so if you have a customer who is fully satisfied with the product then that will be a very good advertisement for the company so this satisfied customer through his word of mouth he will be influencing all his friends and relatives who will in turn come and buy the product so in the integrated marketing we have to see that the customer satisfaction is taken utmost care of so if the customers needs are satisfied then the business will be a success then in the last concept or the societal concept there will be focus on the market and the society now what do we mean by focus on the market and society here we should understand that there are certain customers needs and wants etc but then these needs and wants are not in the best interests of the society or these needs and wants may be harmful to the society in such a condition we have to what kind of a marketing activity we should take up so we should see that the customers needs are met and also the society's well being also is to be taken care of for example if it is a cigarette manufacturing company so it caters to the needs of all the smokers yes but then it is also a uh, creating harm to others in the society through this smoking this uh, there will be other people who will be along with him who will be the passive smokers and their health also will be upset so we have to see that 
whenever we are just promoting such products which are harmful for the health of the uh, society, we have to issue a statutory warning. So what is this statutory warning? You can see on almost all the cigarette packs that cigarette smoking is injurious to health. So when you say, when you just put a statutory warning and sell it, so people who want to just take up this, uh, want to cultivate this habit of smoking, they will, when they read that, they will be, they will be discouraged from using the product whereas the, it will also cater to the needs of the smokers who want to smoke. Then the, even for this kind of uh, concept we need an integrated marketing plan. Then we can have a profit through customer satisfaction and social welfare. Now in case of the societal concept the uh, customer, uh, the profits can come through customer satisfaction. So there are a lot of smokers who will be there and their needs are satisfied as well as the society's needs because the company is issuing a warning to the new smokers who want to take up the habit of smoking. So in this way, we can just see that the customer's needs are also taken care of and also the company is looking after the welfare of the society. So these are the various concepts of marketing which we have discussed now. Now let us look into the various functions of marketing. So in the functions of marketing the first function is gathering and analyzing market information. So even before we go into the new product development we have to see that what are the various needs and wants of the customer and then we have to analyze the information and see that proper products are developed based on this information. Then next one is marketing planning. Now in this marketing planning we have to just set a target for our sales and then see that this sales target is reached. Now how do we reach the sales target? through proper plans. You segment the market and you just focus on the markets where there are proper uh, customers who will purchase the product. So in this way we can have proper marketing planning. Now the third function of marketing relates to product designing and development. Now what do we mean by product designing and development? Now in this product design we have to see that the product is as a very attractive to the customer and also the features which are being offered to the customer they are very very attractive. For example if it is a two wheeler for girls then you just see that the, girls, the two wheeler comes in very very, very attractive colors. Nowadays we get two wheelers which are yellow in color, pink in color or in this fancy colors so that it can attract the ladies who are going in for colors and style. So in this way the uh, functions of marketing will extend to product designing and development. Now the fourth function of marketing is standardization and grading. Now what do we mean by standardization and grading? Standardization means you produce the products based on some predetermined specifications. So based on the specifications you have the quality of the product, the size of the product and the performance of the product. Now this standardization has been introduced to see that there is in uniformity in the production sector and also to see that the customers don't have to inspect each and every product because he is assured of the st standards for which the company is known for. Then next is grading. Now this grading refers to those all those agricultural products. Now whenever the agricultural products have to are purchased they will have to be sorted based on some criteria or some characteristic of that and then we have to see that each grade of product will be given away at a different price. Then the next important function of marketing is packaging and labeling. Now any of the product which is being offered to the customer they have to be properly packaged and labeled. Now why this packaging is important because it protects the product from spoilage and also it sees that the 
product retains its quality until it reaches the hands of the consumer now labeling is also important because it gives an identity to the product along with which we will also know the ingredients which have gone into the making of the product the date on which the product has been produced and also it will have a note regarding the feedback to be collected from the consumer so in this way it is necessary or, or an important function of marketing is packaging and labeling so packaging gives an identity to the product and labeling gives and gives away certain amount of information about the product to the customer then next one is branding now what do we mean by branding so branding is the an, a name which is given for the product by the manufacturer so if the manufacturer has to decide whether the product will be sold in its generic name or the brand name now generic name ne refers to the fan pen or tube light or etc so that is the generic name which is given for the product but then if we if we give it a brand for example philips so philips fans philip pixer philip grinder so in this way we are creating the brand name philips and this brand name has been extended to all the products so when we extend the brand name or to the all the product this brand name becomes a uh, becomes very very popular and people will be associating the quality of the product to the brand so if the brand name is very popular if it has established itself very well and then if it introduces a new product into the market it will be sold very very easily in the market so branding is an essential function of marketing and the branding strategy should be undertaken very very carefully so if the product has to be branded then what should be the brand name what is the logo to be introduced whether the brand has to be registered so all these things have to be taken into consideration before we brand the product then the next one is the customer support services now in this customer support services it includes all those services which are available to the customer like after sale service so once the sale has been executed there is a, a relationship which has started between the seller and the buyer now the uh, seller should be ready to offer or uh, after sale services to the customer then he should also offer technical services whenever the customer calls for and also there are certain other services like transporting the product from the uh, shop to the customer's house and also maintenance services etc which has to be undertaken by the seller of the good so in this way he will see that the proper uh, the customer is properly satisfied with the product so along with the sale he has to take care that there is a proper relationship which is being built with the customer so a proper customer relationship will go a long way in increasing the demand for his products then the next functions of marketing is the pricing of the product now the pricing of the product plays a very important role in creating the demand for the product suppose the price is very low then people may think that it is of a very inferior quality or if it is very high then it may be out of reach of the middle income group so whatever is the pricing of the product so we have to decide based on for whom the product is being created so if the product is uh, created for a high income group then you can charge a very high price but if it is for a middle income group the product should be somewhat averagely priced but if it's for the low income group they don't bother about the price they just want the product so the price plays a very important factor in marketing activity then the next one is promotion now without promotion no products cannot be sold so whatever you have produced you it has to be promoted through promotional activities now what are the various promotional activities it may be through advertisement personal selling sales promotion etc so through all these activities we have to ensure that there are proper promotional activities which are being undertaken through which the products can be properly marketed then next one is 
physical distribution in this physical distribution we have to uh, take two important decisions one is the channels of distribution and the means of transport now in this channels of distribution we have to understand whether the goods have to be sold to the whole wholesalers retailers and consumers that is the wholesalers retailers and consumers and the goods are being transported physical transportation of goods now if it is the physical transportation of goods how do we transfer the goods whether it is by road by rail or by flight so all these decisions pertaining to physical distribution have to be taken in this function of marketing then the 11th function of marketing is transportation now transportation plays a very important role in marketing activity now whether the goods are being produced uh, the, the place where the goods are being produced and the place where it is being consumed the goods have to be taken from the place of production to the place of consumption now how do you just move the goods from the place of production to the consumption so it will be decided based on the nature of the product and also the uh, the quality of the product and how the product has to be transferred so we will be deciding on the various modes of transportation then lastly the storage or warehousing now what do we mean by storage or warehousing once the goods are transported from one place to another we have to see that or whenever the goods are being produced in large quantities we have to ensure that pro proper storage facility and warehousing facilities are available for the protection of these goods now these goods have to be protected and taken care of until they reach the hands of the consumer so for this we need to have proper storage and warehouse facilities to see that there is proper protection of goods and there is also an insurance through which there is any damage for the goods that it can be taken care of by the insurance companies so these are the various functions of marketing which we have discussed and we will be discussing in in detail in the forthcoming sessions hope you have all understood this session on marketing thank you